It burns at 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. It brightens up our sky. It provides light, warmth, and energy. It is a star in the universe. We call it our sun. Sitting 93 million miles away, sending light at 186,000 miles per second. It takes just about 8 minutes for the sun's light to reach us. And its light casts down upon us so we can thrive. Without it, no life on Earth would exist. Life would have never had formed if it weren't for the sun. Which makes one wonder, how did the sun itself form? Well, how did the sun form? Uh, well, many scientists think that the sun and the rest of the solar system uh, formed from a giant rotating cloud of gas and dust known as the solar nebula. And as the nebula collapsed because of gravity, it spun faster and flattened into a disk, and most of the material was pulled toward the center to form the sun. Just after its formation, a massive disk of material surrounded the sun for nearly a hundred million years. As the sun heated the disk, gas evaporated and formed our planets, moons, and asteroids. And ever since, our solar neighborhood has been alive. Our sun continues to be active, and a very hot and active surface causes a lot of solar activity. And none are more common than the solar flare. A solar flare is basically a giant explosion on the surface of our sun, which occurs when the magnetic field lines from the sunspots tangle and erupt. A solar flare occurs when the magnetic energy has built up in the solar atmosphere and is suddenly released. Ejecting clouds of electrons, ions, and atoms, each release produces over a thousand joules of energy. Other energy, known as radiant energy, is carried by packets of light called photons. One to one billionth of the sun's total energy actually reaches Earth. Out of all that energy, 34% of it is reflected back into space by clouds. The rest is for us, and we've learned how to harness that energy. Energy derived from the sun's radiation is known as solar energy. Solar energy is used on Earth in various ways. One way it is used as a passive source of energy. For example, in the form of sunlight that comes through a window and heats up a room. This everyday occurrence didn't go unnoticed, at least by one individual. It was scientist William Herschel who discovered energy from sunlight. He discovered infrared light, and he did this using sunlight during an experiment by allowing certain colors of the spectrum to peer through the window in his house. There is nothing more important to us on Earth than the sun. Without the sun's heat and light, the Earth would be a lifeless ball of ice-coated rock. The sun warms our seas, stirs our atmosphere, generates our weather patterns, and gives us the energy of growing green plants that provide food and oxygen for life on Earth. We as a species learned about the importance of the sun's energy and discovered if nature uses the sun, we can too. Solar energy is radiant light and heat from the sun that is harnessed. It is renewable, cleaner, and the most efficient energy source. It enhances sustainability and will lower the costs of mitigating global warming, which is a human race issue. In comparison to our major energy resources, let me show you the difference. A joule is a unit of measurement of energy. A zettajoule is equal to one sextillion joules. On Earth, as a species, we consume just under one zettajoule a year of our energy. Oil, natural gas, coal, etc. The Earth receives 38,000 zettajoules in one whole year from the sun. That means in just a little over an hour, the sun will give us all the energy we as humans use in an entire year. And this energy is 100% renewable. So how much renewable energy do we currently use per year? Only 22%. In the United States, only three. There's still a lot of information that we do not know about the sun. 
So NASA launched a new mission to find some answers. In 2018, the Parker Space Probe was launched and is headed for the Sun. The mission will last seven years and will orbit the Sun 24 times. Within each orbit around the Sun, the probe will actively make observations, and some of the goals of the missions are to trace the flow of energy that heats the corona and accelerates the solar wind, and also to determine the structure and dynamics of the magnetic fields at the sources of the solar wind. The solar wind travels throughout the entire solar system, and when it reaches Earth, the interaction of the solar wind and the Earth's magnetosphere produce some of the most amazing phenomena. As we speak, the Sun fuses 600 million tons of hydrogen into helium every second on its core, where the temperature reaches 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. At this rate, the Sun has enough hydrogen in its core to continue giving us that needed energy for another 5 billion years. Around that time, the Sun's core will begin to burn up all of its helium and expand into a red giant swallowing up Mercury, Venus, and our home planet. Once all the helium in its core runs out and the fusion stops, the sun will shrink again until a new helium shell reaches the core. When the helium ignites, the outer layers of the star are blown off into a huge clouds of gas and dust known as planetary nebula. The core will continue to collapse onto itself and will become a white dwarf. What was once a bright shining star and being our source of life will become nothing more than a cosmic memory. Many people forget the sun is simply a star. At night, we see thousands of stars in the sky, and perhaps to some distant galaxy and some other life form, our sun is just another star in someone else's sky. Life, warmth, and energy are just some of the basics our star is capable of doing. Throughout our lifetime, we will get to experience the phenomena that involves the sun.